Thank you for having me today. Um, it's an honor to represent the Governor's Teacher Advisory Council, and it's wonderful to see so many familiar faces and those who are making decisions for education and seeking to improve what we have thus far. So I have been a part of the Council since its inception in November of 2013, and we've done a lot of great work since then, and it has been an honor to serve under your leadership, Governor McCoy. Um, back in November of 2013, you asked the Council at that time to provide you with our recommendations regarding standards and assessments. We met in collaborative groups um, in each of the regions, and then we offered your Education Department nine recommendations. We supplied um, those recommendations with justification and suggested uh, strategies for the next steps. That's what we do as teachers. Um, we create a lesson plan, we um, take a look at how that's going to be activities that are going to happen to make that come to fruition. Well, I'm sure you also remember the numerous meetings that you had with superintendents all over our beautiful state. Um, they pleaded with you to reduce the number of, um, the amount of testing in North Carolina. Um, you went to the State Board of Education and asked for a study on the assessments. So you took our recommendations and ran with them, and I want to thank you so much on behalf of the um, Council for doing just that. So I'm sure that I can't give you full credit for this, Governor, but the entire nation changed the limitations of our current uh, assessment format. Um, no Child Left Behind has been updated to Every Student Succeeds Act. So great work, Governor. Um, it seems like when you speak, the nation listens. So even at the federal government level. A few months ago, the Council asked for clarity on the progress of assessments in North Carolina. So Catherine Truitt invited Dr. Tammy Howard, Director of Accountability Services from DPI, to our last meeting. Dr. Howard presented the assessment research the department is currently engaged in and share the amazing progress. All the members of GTAC voiced their positive reactions regarding the research study, and I've already taken the information and given it to my area superintendent so we can possibly apply to be part of that study. So, as you know, I'm an instructional math coach at the elementary school level, and I can say on behalf of my colleagues that I applaud the work that the Department of Public Education has done <coughs> regarding assessments and standards. I thank you for all the hard work that you have done on behalf of our littlest children. And thank you, Governor, for bringing our recommendations into a plan of action. Thank you for sh letting me share a little bit of the history of GTAC before I bring you an update on what we're currently working on under the extraordinary leadership of Catherine Truitt. I want to applaud you for selecting her, and I appreciate that you brought um, an education specialist with lots of education um, history behind you. Um, Catherine, you really have a heart for educators and for the students of our state, and I appreciate that very much. Well, in January of this year, the governor asked the council to be thinking about three things. Teacher pay, which is always a hot topic, digital learning, which I'm so grateful for, and the state 60%, 67% workforce goal. We agreed wholeheartedly as a council to tackle these crucial topics. And our goal is to view each of these through a lens of equity. So Catherine's office created a Google community for the council members. Um, we are reading current articles and research on the topics that have been submitted into our charge for recommendations. And this uh, format of using digital learning has helped <coughs> us all to have access to the same uh, tools. All have access to Google Chats, and we are also making recommendations and comments on the articles that we've been presented. At our next meeting in September, we will be presenting our ideas to each other. So regarding the topic of the day, the 67% workforce goal, at our last meeting, we as council members shared how we believe poverty impacts the individuals in our schools and in our districts, and how that might be contributing to the workforce um, uh, goal um, for our state. So Catherine and Shelby provided us with current research regarding intergenerational poverty and situational poverty. Our task now is to problem solve the topic by coming up with some ideas from the education realm on how we might reach the community, the families of um, our children in poverty, 
and asking ourselves questions about how we can offer our current students strategic support during their education years. I'd like to break away from my written speech for just a moment and share that one of the reasons my husband and I came to North Carolina was the mission and vision of Dr. Atkinson and her background with uh, career and technical education of which my husband is currently in and has been for the last 25 years was a huge draw for us to come to the state and call it our home uh, for the last 11 years. He is currently now a career development coordinator. I heard that uh, title being mentioned um, from the board, from the cabinet, and he does provide internships for uh, the students of high school, talks with them about the careers that they're interested in. They have district-wide and school-wide career expos so children can get um, some information about possibly what their interests are. And combined with those, have um, companies come in and actually interview for summer jobs. And I don't know if you know, but in this area, um, some of the Starbucks are going to start um, providing um, beer and alcohol. So the high schoolers are no longer going to have that as a job option for the summer. But they agreed um, to come to Holly Springs High School and speak with the students and have them practice for interview skills. All of these things are crucial um, to pursue a higher education and to pursue a career. And one of my husband's fondest memories is when a student came in and said, um, Mr. Hare, I would like to be an archaeologist. He said, great, let me get started on something. So he called the state, found that department, and they said, perfect timing. We're doing a dig on a state house lawn uh, at the end of the week. And so this young student got to realize an actual dig with the state of North Carolina. So there are lots of things being done out there, and I would love to promote the career development coordinators in all of the high schools and the work that they do. So I talked about the ways that we're asking ourselves questions um, to offer hope through education and training. We feel as educators that in order to answer those questions for ourselves and for our students, we've got a big job to do. But our goal, even with our youngest kindergartners, is to increase our high school graduation rate and have them college or career ready. Um, lastly, the council has asked Catherine to request an expert to come to um, present to us regarding the new ESA law, so that's Every Student Succeeds Act, um, that will replace No Child Left Behind, again, probably because um, our governor insisted it was time that Nickleby be upgraded in the 21st century. Um, we know currently DPI is hosting forums all over our state to garner feedback from stakeholders, and I will be attending the next one, um, I believe it's on Thursday, at Green Hope High School. So we are hard at work at the Governor's Teacher Advisory Council, and we're grateful that Governor McCrory and Ms. Truitt not only ask for our input on challenging topics, but they take our feedback and run with it. And on behalf of the Council, I thank you for the opportunity to bring an update today, and I thank you that you take our recommendations and guide us. I remember um, not so long ago, we were told all the answers are right here in this room. We just have to collaborate and come up, come up with them and make the recommendations. So thank you again for creating the Teacher Advisory Council, and thank you very much for your leadership, Mr. Ritt.